Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to the Elemental Maker. Today, got these beautiful little little uh, model rocket engines, Estes. Went to, uh, where the hell is she? Wife dragged me over to Slobby Nobby, uh, <laughs> Hobby Lobby, and uh, said they would have cool kits and that sort of stuff. She just wanted to look at, you know, pretty signs and God knows what else. I immediately went over to the actual kind of sciency sort of aisle where now all the chemistry kits have been neutered and I mean God is is proper science kits just in a sad state of affairs in this country probably every other country is just as neutered too if not worse however they still had these little suckers which are packed full of black powder <laughs> as do not repeat this at home, <laughs> but uh, as a young kid, I used to actually take these old, I, I would basically slit them with a, a little, probably can't even say this on freaking YouTube, get my channel deleted, <laughs> but I used to uh, unroll the paper and you're left with kind of a core, you know, with a, a little clay plug at one side, a burst charge at the other, and then just a grain of black powder in the center. Of course, it's compressed. Had to break it up with a, a hammer delicately, but these are how I got gunpowder as a kid and uh, had a lot of fun with it. <laughs> Do not repeat that at home. I repeat. That being said, I want to actually test these and see what kind of thrust curve we can get out of them. I got a pack of C's and uh, somewhere up there I got double D's or two D's, not, not double D's. But I think before we do that, it would be kind of cool to actually take a cross section of one of these. So please excuse me while I go put on some uh, safety gear. So finally freed from its packaging, we have a C6-5 motor. Um, I forget exactly what that means. I think C, yeah, C is like the total impulse. Six, I believe, is the burn duration, and five is the ejection delay. I, I want to say, if I'm remembering correctly. It's been a long time since I messed with these. All right, so here we are at the old Craftsman bandsaw of bad lighting. Uh, you can see I got a couple extinguishers on standby and a couple more out of field of view. <laughs> so I'm going to get all my safety equipment up. Somehow I'm missing my uh, full face shield, so I'll just be using the, uh, this. It's, it's impact rated. Uh, I got some cheap old welding gloves. And... Uh, thick ass sweatshirt on. I do not recommend bandsaw cutting through rocket engines in your basement like I'm about to do. This is the dumbest thing I think I've ever done in here. Uh, this is why I can't wait to get the outside workshop actually built. <laughs> I'm, I'm terrified to do anything in here because it's an old house that'll go up like a goddamn tinderbox. So taking a lot of precautions here but do not repeat this shit. Alright guys, again this is incredibly dumb. Please do not ever attempt this. I genuinely don't even know which way to do it. I guess we'll drill through the burst charge first. That way if that pops, it'll just end grain burn. Should be a little safer. Alright, gonna use this as a uh... <laughs> this is stupid. Too bit. <laughs> Holy shit, look at that. <laughs> Beautiful. That is a nice cross section we got there. Bandsaw cuts a little bit rough. I gotta, gotta fix this thing. It's, it tracks a little strange. I don't know. But this is pretty damn cool. We got it pretty nicely centered right on the nozzle. Off by a tiny bit, but that. God, I can taste can taste the gunpowder in the air. I guess uh, running through the saw. God, I love that smell. It's so beautiful. <laughs> well, this is pretty interesting. 
I'm actually kind of surprised by what I'm seeing here. Let's uh, let's go to the bench. All right, guys. So here is our cross section right off the bandsaw. As you can see, I actually clear coated this side. <laughs> Not so much that side, but pretty interesting what we're looking at here. Very similar to the motors we've actually built, but these ones have a little extra something built in. So looking at the motor here, we have the compressed clay region. Now this is probably just bentonite, aka kitty litter, basically. Uh, there is a warning about silica, so they might have some sort of fire clay or maybe silica sand in there to help prevent nozzle erosion. But we're basically looking at a three millimeter nozzle. And after the compressed nozzle region, we get into the fun part. This is the black powder. So you can see we actually have a, a just a little area for the igniter to sit in there. Um, and I imagine that also propagates a bit of a V wave front. It probably follows that geometry forward and creates a bit of a V. So you're not, not a, it's not technically an end burner. I guess it is. It's like a modified end burner, I guess. Then, so that's where you're getting all your thrust. That's what burns nice and quick, gets a rocket in the air, gets it some altitude. Then we have the delay mixture. So this is probably just gunpowder with a little bit of baking soda mixed in to slow down the burn rate, give you a, uh, a five second or so delay. And then you get to those, I think most of them were knocked out on the bandsaw, but you can just make it out here. There's some tiny little black granules and that's part of the ejection charge. I think there would have been significantly more there on the actual original motor, but that is what actually pops your chute. So, Essentially, you ignite it, burns, five second delay, and then it hits the ejection charge, pops your chute. Pretty beautiful little motor, very well designed, and I'm pretty surprised. I mean, the nozzle, not all that thick. It's only about six millimeters thick. I would have expected much thicker, because these burn for, what, maybe a few seconds, a couple seconds, the actual thrust produce, producing region, so I would have thought Nozzle erosion would have been a little bit more of a problem, but I guess it isn't. Really nice clean motor here. So let's go test fire these suckers and see how they actually perform. Got ourselves a beautiful day for a little rocket testing. So what I'm going to do is stick it in there and uh, I'm going to wad it in with a little bit of the uh, paper towel here to kind of keep it centered as best as possible. One thing I really didn't consider was if the Estes igniters will actually work with these. Now we could use our normal E-matches, that, that would probably be A-OK, -okay. but I kind of want to see if it'll work. If I remember back to my days in the park as a kid, I believe the igniters had a, a number of double A's in them. At least the ones I used to use. Um, so I imagine they were probably using at least six volts. I mean, here we have uh, we have nine. So I think we'll actually be pretty good. Let's try our first test. So we got everything set up. E match in there. Little butt plug that SDs likes to use. Set up the GoPro here gonna be really exciting. You think SpaceX puts on a good show? Let's see what SDs can do. And my computer's off. We're hooked up. Let's give her a try. <laughs> oh, that was great. That put on a bit of a show, huh? <laughs> it was way louder than I was expecting. I think that thing made some pretty good thrust. I'm pretty impressed. Looks like that little jobby put out a max of, uh, yeah, 1.2, 1.3 kilograms thrust. Not too shabby. I'm gonna test the other C and then we'll move on to the two Ds, the double Ds. Just putting the second one in here and I gotta say, I do like that little butt plug design they use here for the ass of the rocket engines. What that probably allows it to do is, one, the igniter has 
more confinement, so it's guaranteed for that flame front to hit the black powder. It also allows it to build up a little bit of pressure before that gets ejected. So I'm going to try filming high speed. And when I say high speed, we're not talking slow motion guys here, unfortunately. <laughs> the GoPro here is limited to, uh, I think it's 240 frames per second, which actually is pretty damn good for a, uh, a consumer product. If anyone has any leads on like a, a decent slow motion camera, uh, I would love to get one for some future videos. Um, really want to do a video, well, I'm not going to give it away, but <laughs> if you have any tips for a slow motion camera, please uh, drop them in the comments. That ejection charge was a little more potent. All right, moving on to our beautiful plus size models. <laughs> let's uh, let's see what these do. I bet you it's going to be a little bit more impressive. Now I gotta say, with these two motors, I have not yet looked up the actual SD's like flight information or uh, not flight, flight information, uh, engine characteristics. I believe they have published data and thrust curves on on all these so I'm curious to see how the data we get matches up with the data they publicly provide so I think that'll be pretty cool to compare <laughs> got that thing leveled pretty good by eye they're landing right on her it honestly didn't sound as loud as the seas. Kind of shocked by that. Let's see what the data says. <laughs> That's pretty fun. <laughs> Not gonna lie. It is a lot more interesting shooting uh, shooting off motors that have ejection charge. Me gusta. So, getting at the data, now right off the bat, I have to say I did not get to measure the actual mass of propellant in one of these. The only one I have left is this, which obviously <laughs> is cut away, and we can't really mass that. I'm going to have to go with the data that Estes publishes for their propellant. Uh, so, they basically said for the C65 motors, they're using 12.48 grams of black powder as the propellant. And for the D12-5, they're using 24.93. So that's actually a, a pretty fair amount of propellant in that, in that D motor. Now, according to the sheets, they're looking at a total impulse of 20 for the D, D12-5 and a total impulse of 10 for the C65. And my data isn't too far off from that, actually. So you can see my first test here. Maybe I'll put a screenshot up of it, I, I don't know. But uh, basically we got a max thrust of about 1300 grams. The, that was the you know initial liftoff thrust and then the sustainer was about 333 grams on average. Had a nice long burn rate of about two and a half seconds. And this is the only one I actually included the ejection charge. But you can see our ejection popped basically right at six seconds. Uh, after initial launch and the the force that <laughs> recorded on the measurement stand was 438 grams on the burst charge but I mean is that a freaking beautiful thrust curve look at that shit oh yeah ISP <laughs> so now comparing the uh, published value and the experimental value we got again we're not using lab grade instruments. I imagine what they're using at Estes is a little better. I also didn't include the uh, the delay burn, which might add a tiny, tiny bit of impulse. But basically, they're saying for the C motor, getting an impulse, total impulse of 10, R showed 8.75, basically, 8.74. And our ISP was about 71.5. Uh, the closest I was able to find was this. I don't know if this was published by Estes or someone else experimenting, but they got C motors 
around 80 to 90 ISP. Now you can see the second motor, pretty much the same thing. Uh, beautiful thrust curve, tiny bit less thrust on this one, about 1100 grams of thrust total. Sustainer still looked the same, burst charge was identical. Really good consistency with these, and the D's looked even better. So the D's, I mean, could you get a more picture perfect set of data than that? That's beautiful. That is staring at science. <laughs> so you can see here, we got a total impulse of 17.25. They published 20. Or, you know, it's probably just data error at this point, or measurement error, rather. Uh, ISP of about 71, so not too far off from, uh, what did I say there, about 80. Probably chalk it up to uh, an Arduino-based system, being a little hokey. And the final test, pretty much identical on this one. I mean, both of them just got right around 3 kilograms of thrust total, which really impressed me. I was not expecting them to put out 3,000 grams of thrust. That's a, a pretty fair amount. So I gotta say guys, these are some very nicely made motors. I wasn't expecting them to be as predictable as they are. I, I always saw these curves online and I thought, oh yeah, they're <laughs> they, they won't look that pretty in real life. And I'll tell you what, Graft, these are some smooth Smooth motors. Really, really good performance. I'm pretty impressed with SDs, I gotta say. Well guys, thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed. I know that it got a little, maybe data heavy. <laughs> I don't know, how else do I present data without being boring? It's just kind of what it is. But I hope you enjoyed. Thank you so much for watching. Please don't forget to thumbs up, subscribe, uh, click that little dingleberry next to subscribe. That way you can get notified when I post. And uh, if you like the channel enough, please consider supporting it on Patreon. i got a lot of cool projects coming up. And every little bit of funding helps. So uh, truly appreciate my patrons out there. You guys are the best. And to close out, I will put a couple slow-mos of the SD motors uh, <laughs> doing their thing. Pretty cool watching it in slow-mo, so I think you guys will enjoy. Have a great one, guys.